this video will discuss on the second topic namely project planning process for the system analysis and design course this topic too exposes students on the planning phase which is the first phase in the system development life cycles or sdlc at the end of this topic too students should be able to first understand how projects for an information system is started second define the problems faced by the client organization and conduct feasibility study for the proposed project third student should be able to identify and schedule the activities for project planning and fourth manage a project in terms of team members analysis and design activities to ensure the project objectives are achieved and completed as per schedule there are five related subtopics for this topic too we have project initiation that focus on the issues and problems identification faced by the organization also the proposed solutions that offer opportunities for business organization improvement this topic too exposes students how to conduct feasibility study for the proposed project cost benefit analysis or in short cba will be the example of feasibility study technique from the economical perspective for this course after feasibility studies and the project is initiated, details planning and control measurement must be performed. Work breakdown structure or WBS will be the example of planning and control technique to be implemented for the project. Well organized scheduling must be conducted to plan and control for the identified activities, person in charge and deliverables for each SDLC. Three main techniques namely the gun chart, Output diagram and critical path method or CPM will be explained during project scheduling. And finally, the overall team project management are concluded to provide the evidence of project charter as systematic documentation for the overall SDLC. In this part 1 of topic 2, we will focus on the project initiation and feasibility studies. Let's start with the concept on project initiation. There are two main factors that contribute to begin, start or initiate a project for an information system. First factor is the current problems that cause unsatisfactory from the involved people in the organization. Second factor is any opportunity that provide room of improvement in the organization business activities. These opportunities might be appeared due to recent upgrading, maintaining, or even once new system is being installed. So now let's look what is the proper process or steps to initiate a project for an information system. Basically, there are three main process to begin a project. First process is to identify the current issues that lead to the problem and any opportunity that provides room of improvement for the daily activities in the business organization. These two aspects, namely problems and opportunity, should be then defining the problem statement. This problem statement to be documented as proposed solutions. Then, the proposed solution will be further implemented to the decided or selected project by the higher management in the organization. How to identify the problems and opportunities to solve current issues faced by the organization? Let's recap the three important roles of system analysts in previous topic 1. System analyst or SA studies the problems and needs of an organization to determine how people, data, process, communications, and information technology can best accomplish improvement for the organizations. SA is a consultant that act as an outsider or external party that give fair or unbiased judgment to the organization. SA is a supporting expert that act as professional expertise concerning computer hardware and software. SA is an agent of change that act as a person who develops a plan for change and work with others in facilitating the changes. Thus, SA may observe the output from day-to-day -day business activities conducted by the organization employees. 
check whether the output results of the process activities are not aligned to the certain level of performance expectation. Okay, let's look at UTM Smart Application as an example to identify the problems and opportunities for improvement. Observe and look at the specific signs such as Is there many errors while you use UTM Smart to scan the QR code for class attendance? Is the scanning lead to slow, incorrect, incomplete or failure when sometimes you can't successfully scan the QR code at all? Apart from the performance output, SA may also observe the behavior of the organization employees. Whether is there any signs of high number of absenteeism, dissatisfaction reported, or high rate of job turnover? This will bring conclusion about low productivity among the staff in business environment of the organization. Not only from the internal environment, SA also may interview the external parties, for example, the vendors, customers, and suppliers in collecting the feedbacks for complaints, sales report, as well as any suggestions from them. Second step to begin or initiate a project is defining problem statement to be documented as project proposal. Before the problem statement definition is produced, information is gathered from interviews, observations, and existing document analysis with the users or stakeholder in the organization. Major points are then identified as issues. Once the issues are identified for the current situation, the desired situation or expected objective are stated. Sometimes this may require follow-up interviews further. After the objectives are stated, the relative importance of the issues or objective is determined in order to set priority for the expected objectives. Due to some constraint that is generally necessary to order or to prioritize the objective in determination for which one is the most critical. There are five main contents in problem definition that normally produce as project proposal documentation. First section normally is the main problem statement that is formulated as the summary of the report. Second content is a section that elaborates the issues of the current situation. Third content is a section explaining the expected objectives or the desired situation. Next is a section that provides list of specific needs or requirements including security aspect, usability of human interaction interface, or any specific government regulations that related to the proposed objectives. Last content is a section that describes the specified constraints which give certain scope to the human resources, budget restrictions, or time limitation. Final step to begin or initiate a project is by selecting the project to be further developed. A project is selected based on a number of considerations or contribution factors such as the selected project will receive full endorsement or backing from the higher management who eventually will foot the bill or bear the cost of system development. Another factor is it is the right or appropriate time for installation of new system to improve the existing ones. And also, it is practical when there are enough expertise and resources to carry out the project. By having new project commitment, the selected proposed project is hoped to improve their organizational goals and targets.